Hey y'all, today I'm going to show you how easy it is to make my Mediterranean veggie pasta. This is one of my family's favorite dishes right now and it is so simple and easy to make. It literally takes less than 20 minutes probably to throw together. And I love this because this dish is inspired by one of the combinations on my favorite pizzas here in our neighborhood. So there's a restaurant down the street that does a pizza with these ingredients and it inspired me to create this pasta. So I wanna show you how quickly you can throw together an easy meal for your family that everybody will love. I'm going to start with, um, I've got the water on to boil for my pasta. I am using, um, this is from Whole Foods. It is uh, bow tie pasta is what I call it, far file. I don't know the, the Italian way to pronounce it, but it's the ones that look like little bow ties. I kind of vary my pasta. Sometimes I will buy like whole wheat or regular um, pasta, and then sometimes I'll buy like the different chickpea or bean pastas. So, it, so use whatever pasta you want to use. Um, okay, so we're going to start with one onion. You can either use a yellow onion or a white onion. Um, I like to just kind of do like a medium onion. So hopefully I'm going to try and put this on the screen where you guys can see because I always think it's helpful to learn like knife skills from people. So the first things that I do with my big chef's knife, I just slice off the two ends of the onions. I'll toss this and then remove the skin from the onion. So we can get a hold of it. And I'm actually not gonna dice this onion for this recipe. I'm just gonna thinly slice it. Skin removed from my onion. Now I'm just gonna cut it in half, like from one end to the other where I remove the ends. And then I'm just gonna take my knife and make really small slices. And these will, the size will depend on how big your onion is. But basically we're making just like slivers of onions. I'm going to um, just kind of roughly chop four cloves of garlic. My husband loves garlic, so we do everything super garlicky. If you are not such a huge fan of garlic, you could back off and maybe use just a couple of cloves of garlic, but I'm gonna use four. Um, I went ahead and put my skillet on um, a little bit higher than medium, maybe not quite medium high, but a little bit higher than medium, and I'm gonna let that heat while I chop my garlic. So a little trick here to loosen up the skin around your clove of garlic is to place your knife, the flat side on the clove of garlic and just smash it with your hand. And then it'll be nice and easy to peel the skin off of your garlic. So a little tidbit of nutrition information for you while you're watching me peel garlic is that um, all of the onions and all of the different onions in the onion family, green onions, yellow onions, red onions, um, garlics, they're all in the same family. And they all are really high in prebiotic fiber, which is fantastic for digestive health. So um, you hear a lot about probiotics, which are the foods that, um, or I'm sorry, they're not the foods, they are the, uh, the actual bacteria in our gut, the good, good probiotics. Um, prebiotics are the food that the bacteria live off of. So you wanna make sure that you're feeding your gut bacteria lots of healthy food, which is prebiotic fiber. So again, just a rough chop on the garlic. I'll usually just do like a couple of quick long slices and then just take my knife and chop it up a little bit smaller. It doesn't have to be perfect. We're just gonna saute this up in the skillet. It smells really good. And I think I see my water boiling over there. So I'm gonna check that too. Water is boiling. So I'm gonna go ahead and add my pasta because it needs to cook for about 11 minutes. And it can do that while all of the rest of the vegetables are I'm gonna use half out. of this box of bow tie pasta. Um, this is a 16 ounce container. So that's about eight ounces of pasta. I'm gonna add it to my boiling pasta water and then I'm gonna cook it according to the package directions for al dente. So you don't wanna ever cook pasta past al dente. It gets really gummy and it affects the texture. So for this particular pasta, the box says 11 minutes for al dente. Set my timer and there we go. Now back to this. I'm gonna add a couple of tablespoons of olive oil to the skillet. Um, and I don't really measure. I just kind of know 
about what two tablespoons. So it's kind of like maybe two circles around the pan, but it doesn't have to be super um, specific. So I added that to the skillet and now I'm gonna add the onions and the garlic. And there are a lot of other oils that you can cook with, but I still really love to cook with olive oil. I like the flavor. But um, a little tidbit about olive oil, you grab a spoon so I can stir it, right? Is that you wanna buy good olive oil. So I always buy um, a cold press and I like to buy a European olive oil. The onion and the garlic saute for about maybe four to five minutes or so in the skillet. You wanna keep an eye on it and you know that the onion is starting to really saute when it begins to become translucent. And of course, it smells amazing. I wish you guys could smell it. Okay, so my onions and garlic are smelling really nice and fragrant now and the onion is becoming translucent. So I'm gonna go ahead and add some more of my ingredients. Um, I've got an eight ounce container or package that I bought in the produce section of sliced baby Bella mushrooms. You can most definitely buy a whole portabella or baby Bella mushrooms and slice those yourself, but I like the convenience that they're already sliced. So I've rinsed those real well, and I'm gonna add them to the skillet. I'm gonna add a jar, a 10 ounce jar of whole artichoke hearts. So I buy these and um, they're with like the Italian and other um, vegetable ingredients, pickles and things like that, usually in the grocery store. But I did rinse them and drain them first in my colander just to get rid of any of the briny water that they sit in. And then I've also got a half cup of Greek Kalamata olives. They're kind of like the dark, purpley, sort of black olives. Um, and you can buy them sliced or you can slice them yourself. But again, I've got half a cup of these that I had drained. So it's a half cup of the olives without the liquid. So I'm gonna add all of that to the skillet. And the artichoke hearts will kind of break up in the skillet as they heat up and just from using your spoon to stir everything. So you don't really have to slice those. They're nice and tender to begin with. And we'll let this all go for about another five minutes. Okay, so what happens as the mushrooms are cooking is they actually start to release their water. So you'll notice that your mixture starts to get a little bit heavier and it's like you added water to it, but, it, but you didn't, it's just from the mushrooms. So that's nice and mixed. Well, I'm gonna go ahead and add the rest of my ingredients, tomato sauce or pasta sauce. So this is my my personal non-negotiable. This is the only one I use. This is Rouse, and I really like the marinara sauce. They're all good. I've tried the tomato basil and the arrabbiato, which is one that's a little bit spicier. Um, but I always go back to just the regular marinara sauce. I buy this at Whole Foods. Kroger has it. It's pretty easy to find. It's a little bit more expensive, but I'm telling you it is worth it. It is so good, and this is my go-to. So I've added the rouse, and I'm gonna um, lower my heat so it's just about a simmer so that the sauce doesn't start popping out. You want, it to, you want the heat to start to go lower. And my pasta is also just about to be done. So so you can do all of this while your pasta is cooking. Okay, I'm gonna also add about a half teaspoon of sea salt. I don't measure salt usually. I keep my salt in this well, and I'll just grab it by my fingers, but it's about half a teaspoon. If you like things a little bit saltier, feel free to add more and adjust your seasoning. The last thing that I'm gonna add to this mixture is a couple of handfuls of greens. Um, we wanna do that for few reasons. Number one, adding greens. I've got baby arugula. That's what I like to add to this dish. You could also do baby kale or baby spinach. Um, I like to buy the boxes that it's already pre-washed, um, but it adds a lot of nutrition. You can really not even taste the greens. So if you think that your family won't be open to it, I promise you can barely taste it. Also, I love the color that greens give to a dish. So I'm just going to add maybe two pretty big handfuls of arugula. It's going to wilt down and that's why we turn the heat down. We don't want to kill our greens, but just with the heat being on low heat even, it's going to cause this arugula to wilt. You could even go ahead and turn the fire all the way off. I turn the fire, the heat off on my sauce, 
and I'm just gonna let the heat of the sauce sit here and wilt the arugula. And then since my pasta is done, I'm gonna take it over to the sink and drain it. So the pasta is drained and now I'm gonna add this to the pan with the sauce. It is a little bit full, so work carefully now. But the heat of all of this is going to continue to wilt the greens. So you'll mix everything up so that all of the pasta is covered with the sauce. That's another reason that I really love to use this bow tie pasta because it's got little um, sort of nooks and crannies in the pasta. And I like that because the sauce can really get in there into the noodles. So I have found, I've made this dish before with like a long spaghetti noodle where the sauce just slips right off. So if you use one of these noodles, like, um, again, I call them bow tie pasta. I think it's called farfetta. I don't know how, I don't know the pronunciation. But then there's also like the penne noodles that are smaller and they've got ridges. Those also work well, but my favorite for this dish is the bow tie pasta. So just combining everything well. And then you don't wanna serve it while it's too hot. That really kind of um, makes the flavor not as good. So I like to let everything sit here for about 10 minutes on my stove so that it gets nice and cool and the flavors really blend well. So that is it, my Mediterranean veggie pasta inspired by my favorite local pizza here in my neighborhood. Um, this recipe is vegan, it's dairy-free. You can make it gluten-free if you want to by using gluten-free noodles. Again, I did not today, but that is an option for you. I hope that you enjoyed this video and maybe picked up some home cooking tips as you're watching. And I hope you'll join me here for the next one. Thanks so much, bye.